would like for you to take your Bible, turn to the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 8, please. While you're turning there, uh, I want to congratulate Brother Jack and uh, his new bride, Miss yes, Anessa. Yeah. And uh, I was here for the wedding, and as I was watching the proceedings and watched them get married, uh, I was reminded uh, just how blessed my wife is. Uh, I mean, I nearly teared up thinking about it. And, uh, touched my heart. I find that the longer I'm married, the more I have to remind her of what a blessing I am. So, uh, my wife, unfortunately, is not uh, with us this week, but I'd like to ask you to pray for her. She's at home taking care of her mom and her dad and uh, was unable to make the trip. And, uh, but she sends her love and her prayers and uh, she said to tell everyone hello and uh, that she's certainly praying. And uh, tonight, uh, I will read three or four verses of Scripture try to give you what the Lord has given us. Matthew chapter number 8, if you would look at verse number 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Skip down to verse number 14, if you would. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand. And the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Let's pray. Our Father, tonight we're grateful for what our ears have heard and what our heart has felt. Thank you for the presence of God in this place. Lord, may you guard my mouth, my mind, and my heart. I wouldn't want to do anything to hinder you from blessing your people. Lord, I pray you'd touch your unprofitable servant. Lord, you know in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. Lord, if anything gets done, the good Holy Ghost is going to have to do it. Pray you'd touch us. Pray you'd help us. Pray you'd give us clarity of mind and speech. May you use us tonight. May you help your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. When you study this chapter, you'll find on two separate occasions that the Lord touched someone. We find that he touched a leper in verse number 3. And he cleansed him of his leprosy with just one touch. You'll find that Jesus never healed a leper. He cleansed them. Why? Because leprosy is a type of sin. And Jesus didn't didn't heal us from sin. He cleansed us. And that means it has the potential to come back if we're not careful. And that's why the Bible says Jesus cleansed a leper and doesn't say he healed a leper. But we find that leprosy is a type of sin, and Jesus cleanses this man with just one touch. It's a picture of a sinner being cleansed by the Master. But then in verse number 15, you'll find he touches Peter's mother-in-law, and he heals her of her sickness. In these two passages, we find a great truth that Jesus has power over sin and over sickness. He simply touched them and the work was done. Now all throughout the Gospels you'll find where Jesus touched people. In Matthew chapter number 9, he touches two blind men and these men had their eyes opened and were finally able to see clearly. You'll find these men received clarity In Matthew chapter number 17 at the Mount of Transfiguration when God the Father spoke concerning His Son and said 
This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The disciples that were there, the Bible says this, they were sore afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. These men were calmed from all their fears. And there's many other stories in the Bible where the Lord touched people and changed their lives. In Luke chapter number 7, we find Jesus touched a casket and the dead man got up. This man was dead, but one touch from the master, he is changed from death unto life. You'll find this man was changed. Matthew chapter number 20, there's two other blind men who are touched by the Savior. And you'll find in verse number 34 of Matthew chapter number 20, the Bible says, So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. These fellows received a correction to their course. You'll find each time Jesus touches someone in the passages that I just quoted to you, you will find that they are a type, a picture of what happened to you and I when we got saved. In the first story, the story of the leper, he received a touch and was cleansed. I'm glad, thank God tonight, that the Lord cleansed us from all sin and all unrighteousness. You'll find in the second story, Peter's mother-in-law, she received a touch and was cured. In the third story, the two blind men receive a touch and they receive clarity. In the fourth story on the Mount of Transfiguration, these men received a touch and were calmed. Their fear and their concern was gone with just one touch. In the funeral story, the dead man received a touch and he got changed from death unto life. In the last story, the blind, these blind men receive a touch and their course is corrected. The Bible says that they followed him. You realize when we got born again, that's what happened to us. You'll find that the Lord touched us. And when he touched us, we received cleansing. We received the cure. We received clarity. We received calmness. We received a change. And we received a course correction. In every one of these stories, it's a picture of what happened to you and I when the Lord touched us. I mean, brother, when we got saved by grace, God cleansed us from all of our sin, all of our unrighteousness. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not only did that, not only did we receive cleansing, we got cured. No longer an addict. No no longer a drunkard, no longer a harlot, no longer a dopehead, no longer a liar, no longer a thief, no longer an adulterer, no longer a fornicator. Brother, we got the cure when we got saved by grace. We received clarity. I remember the day I got saved. It was like scales had fallen from my eyes. It seemed like the grass was a little greener. The sky was a little bluer, and for the first time in my life, I could see clearly after he touched me. You'll find I was calmed after I got saved. Before we got saved, we were scared to death of dying and going to hell. But hear me tonight, if death should come my way, I'm glad, thank God, there's not a bit of fear. There's not a bit of doubt. I know that I know that I know heaven is my home. I got calmed when he touched me. And you'll find we were changed. We passed from death unto life. We weren't sick, we were dead. We weren't struggling, we were dead. We weren't confused, we were dead. But he touched us. Now, tonight, when he touched us, he corrected our course. 
Well, the Bible says we were following the course of this world before we got saved. But once we got saved, uh, he corrected our course. Uh, and I'm no longer following the things of this world. I am following the master. Just like those two men, he opened their eyes. And the Bible says they followed him. He corrected our course. Now, tonight, I'd like to preach on this thought briefly. He touched me. The old song says, He touched me and all the joy that filled my soul. And I got to thinking about this as I was looking at the passages I mentioned earlier. I began to think about this that when you touch something, it leaves behind a fingerprint. It's impossible for you to touch something with your natural hand without leaving a fingerprint. That fingerprint may not always be visible, but it's always there. Now tonight you realize that the same is true for the Lord. When God touches something, he leaves his fingerprints all over the thing that he touched. He leaves behind evidence and proves that he was there and that he touched us. He leaves behind a fingerprint of, on everyone that he's ever touched. So I began to think about it and I began to look at fingerprints and I found out that there are three distinct types of fingerprints. And I want to give them to you tonight and this will be the message. You'll find the first type of fingerprint is called a latent print. Now these types of print, uh, these types of fingerprints, they leave behind oil from the skin. They basically leave behind an oily residue. Long after the individual has withdrawn their hand, the oil still remains. I mean, the oil is still left behind. You realize tonight that the good Holy Ghost is typified as oil in your Bible? And listen, I remember it's been over 26 years uh, since he touched me and saved my never dying soul. But from that day to this, uh, he has left the oil behind. uh, And I'm glad, thank God, that the oil remains uh, in my life. Uh, I'm glad, thank God, uh, that I'm saved. Uh, But God didn't leave me to him saying to myself, uh, he left behind the oil of God uh, that I might live for him, uh, love him, Serve him. And it's all because he left the oil behind. And as I began to study it, I learned some things about these latent fingerprints. It said that latent fingerprints are not visible to the naked eye because it's just an oily residue. It means they can't be seen with our natural sight. But even though we may not be able to see them with our natural eye, the oil is still there. Now tonight, the world cannot see the oil. Other Christians may not be able to see the oil, but I'm glad even though it can't be seen, the oil still remains and the oil is still there. Uh, Listen, I may not be able to see it, but I sure can feel it. Brother Craigle up singing, I felt the oil one more time. I'm glad God has left the oil behind after he touched us. When someone sings or someone preaches, we holler, touch them, Lord. We know we can't see the all, but Lord have mercy, we sure can feel it. I sure do like it when they get to sing it about the blood. I sure do like it when they get to saying how he reached way down for me. Hey, something bubbles up down in my heart. You may not be able to see it, but I can feel it down in my soul. You say, why? Because when he touched me, he left the oil behind. Thank God for the good Holy Ghost. 
In 2 Kings 4, you'll find a poor widow woman. Her husband has died. She runs to the man of God and she says, I, the creditors are come. My husband's dead and they're fixing to take my two boys. He said, what do you got in the house? She said, all I got is the oil. And you know what he said? That's enough to get the job done. You may be here tonight and feel like you ain't got nothing, but hear me, brother. Hear me, sister. If you've got the oil, it's enough to get the job done. God can use the aisle to bring you through. And they said, you leave behind an oily residue. Those are latent prints. The second type of print is called a patent print. And as I was studying on this, this is what the writer said. These fingerprints are visible and clear to the naked eye and left on a surface generally in blood or ink. What they mean is this. Many years ago, now unfortunately some of y'all know all about this. When they used to take your fingerprint they would stick it in the ink. Then they'd pull it and they'd roll it on a card. And it would leave behind a very visible uh, pattern. And they, it was identifiable as a fingerprint. Now they digitized everything. But back in the day, uh, they would use ink. Uh, and uh, when you would put your finger in that ink, they would roll it onto the card and your fingerprint would be visible. It said when these fingerprints are left behind, they're left behind in ink. Uh, hear me tonight. You know what God gave you? God's fingerprint prints all over this book. It's God's book. It's the Word of God. And God reached down and stuck His fingerprints all over this book. Hey, listen to me tonight. I'm glad, thank God, I've got a King James Bible. It's got the fingerprints of God all over this thing tonight. Hallelujah for the book. But then he said, not only are they left in ink, but they're left in blood. He went on to say this for an example. When someone gets blood on their hands and then they touch something else, it will leave a transfer. The blood that was on their hand has now been transferred to the surface that they have touched. Aren't you glad tonight uh, that when God reached down and touched us, uh, he transferred the blood of the darling son of God and left it on our soul. And tonight, uh, that's the blood that washed away our sins, made us fit for heaven, made us a child of the king. Thank God tonight when God leaves his fingerprints uh, on some old sinner, it's transferred the blood of God's son down to you and I. They say when you enter into a crime scene, the evidence is everywhere. If the forensic examiner or the crime scene tech were to dust you and I down and take the prints off of us, they'd have to say, God's been there because he's left his fingerprints all over you and I. It said that at least it's visible uh, to the naked eye. Hear me tonight. Uh, the world can see uh, that we've been changed. Uh, the way we dress, uh, the way we act, uh, the way we talk, uh, the places we go. That is evidence uh, to a lost and dying world that God has left a bloody fingerprint uh, all over our soul. The blood and the ink of this old book. Now, it said this, every fingerprint is unique. 
that no two people have the same fingerprint. Now, the same is true with the Lord. No one has a fingerprint like him. His prints are unique. They quoted a fingerprint expert. And this is what he said. When examining fingerprints of suspects, perhaps they were found at a crime scene. They take and lift that print, then they go back to their office. And they compare the sample that they found at the crime scene with uh, records of people whose fingerprints are on file. They said they can take the sample, they can run through all of the prints that they have uh, at their access, uh, and they can eliminate suspects and they can tell that that don't match. And so they, they can discard that. It wasn't him. They look at another one to say, oh, we can compare these and that wasn't him. Do you hear me tonight? Do you realize you and I can do the same thing? We've got God's fingerprint on file and we can hold it up to any known sample. We can say the Jehovah's Witnesses, the prints don't match. We can look at the Mormons and say the print don't match. We can look at the Catholic and say the prints don't match. How can you say that? It's because we've got God's fingerprints on file. And tonight, none of those other religions, Buddhist prints, they don't match tonight. You say, how do we know? You're mean-spirited. You're hateful. You're hurtful. No, 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 no. I can just take that sample and hold it up to what we got on file. Them other samples don't match. And tonight, but I'm glad for every born again, blood washed, birth saint of God Almighty. When we hold up uh, uh, this book, uh, God's fingerprints on file, uh, they match. It's a match. It's a match tonight that we are God's children tonight. Now, tonight, God has left a bloody fingerprint all over our souls. But the third type of fingerprint, it's called a plastic fingerprint. Now, plastic fingerprints are a third type that are left behind... And this is, this is what they said. This type of fingerprint is left behind in mud or a similar substance. Did you catch that? It leaves a fingerprint in mud. Do you know what you and I are made of? According to the book of Genesis, God scooped up some mud and he breathed the breath of life into it. And brother, that's all you and I are. We're just mud and dirt. But God has left his fingerprint all over us. Now listen to me. I Tonight, I, I, God's been touching mud uh, since the fall. They said this about this type of fingerprint, that it leaves an impression. It leaves an indentation. I mean, it leaves an impression in the mud. The mud may be smooth throughout, but right in the middle of that mud is an indentation or an impression. May I say this tonight? You, you and I are made out of mud. But if God ever touches you, I promise you, he will leave an impression on your life. You'll never be the same. You'll be changed. You'll be different. God will leave an impression on you. If God ever puts his hand on you, it'll certainly leave an impression on you. I'm glad tonight that God has left the evidence all over you and me. I found, as I continued to study, they have a new thing that they just started using. It's called touch DNA. And what that means is simply this. When you touch something, 
you leave behind your DNA. That means a little bit of you rubs off on whatever you touch. Can I say this? The same is true for God Almighty. A little bit of Him has rubbed off on you and me. It's left an impression. It's left an indentation. Hey, thank God. When he touched me, he took my liquor. He took my dope. He took my cussing. He took my sin. And he changed me and left an impression on me. I've been saved by grace. And a little bit of God has rubbed off on me. Tonight, I'm glad he touched me. I'm grateful for the touch. Undeserving, yes. Unworthy, yes. Deserving of hell, absolutely. But God came by where I was at. 24 years old. Lost on my way to hell. A dopehead and a drunkard. Two weeks before I got saved, I was snorting cocaine off my kitchen table. But thank God, thank God. Somebody told me about Jesus. God got to dealing with me and got to convicting me. He took all the fun out of my dope. He took all the fun out of my liquor. He showed me I was lost, showed me I was undone. And there at 203 Veneta Drive, apartment number four, thanks be unto God, he touched me that day. I ain't never been the same. I'm glad he touched me tonight. Bring Jesse over.